In just over two months, this country will have its first African-American first lady. Since the start of the presidential campaign, Michelle Obama has been more scrutinized than the spouse of any presidential candidate. But most accounts have either focused on her sense of fashion or tried to portray her as a caricature, um, as scant attention has been paid to Michelle Obama's personal history. Her ancestors were slaves. Her grandfather was part of the Great Migration out of the South, North. Uh, she herself grew up in the South Side of Chicago in the midst of the civil rights era was uh, closely involved in community organizing work. I wanted to turn right now to Michelle Obama um, during the Democratic National Convention, her address. And Barack stood up that day and he spoke words that have stayed with me ever since. He talked about the world as it is and the world as it should be. And he said that all too often we accept the distance between the two and we settle for the world as it is, even when it doesn't reflect our values and aspirations. But he reminded us that we also know what the world should like, look like. He said, we know what fairness and justice and opportunity look like. And he urged us to believe in ourselves, to find the strength within ourselves to strive for the world as it should be. And isn't that the great American story? It's, it's the story of men and women gathered in churches and union halls, in high school gyms, and people who stood up and marched and risked everything they had, refusing to settle determined to mold our future into the shape of our ideals. And it's because of their will and determination that this week we celebrate two anniversaries, the 88th anniversary of women winning the right to vote and the 45th anniversary and the 45th anniversary of that hot summer day when Dr. King lifted our sights and our hearts with his dream for our nation. Michelle Obama addressing the Democratic National Convention in Denver this past August. We're joined now here in Washington, D.C., by Washington Post staff writer Liza Mundy. She is the author of a new biography of Michelle Obama. It's called Michelle, a Biography. And we welcome you to Democracy Now!, Liza. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. It's good to have you with us. Well, Monday was quite a scene at the White House, having uh, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, uh, the president-elect and, I guess, the first lady-to-be, walking into the White House, uh, the White House built by slaves in this country. Now, Barack Obama, the son of a Kenyan man and a white woman from Kansas, is not the descendant of slaves. But Michelle Obama is. Can you, Liza, tell us her story? Tell us where her family comes from, and then talk about Michelle herself, when she was born, where she was born. Yes, it is. I mean, she embodies an extraordinary American narrative, and, and, and her family's story is a classic uh, strand of African American history and, and therefore of American history. Her father's family is from Georgetown County, South Carolina, uh, which at one point produced much of the country's rice. And um, at one point, 85 percent of the population of Georgetown County was enslaved. Um, her uh, her great great grandfather uh, would have been a slave at one point in her, his life. Her great grandfather, Fraser Robinson, what worked during Reconstruction. He was a kiln laborer for Atlantic Coast Lumber Company. And then her grandfather, who was also named Fraser Robinson, picked up and moved north, uh, in his case to Chicago, with the Great Migration, along with millions of other African Americans, and settled on the south side of Chicago, which um, is a large portion of the city. Uh, and, and the reason that African Americans were attracted to that part of the city was because there were so many working class 
middle-class jobs. There were, of course, stockyards and steel mills and railroads um, and, and a lot of labor and, and, you know, certainly better opportunity for work than there was in the South. But the South side of Chicago was a very, very segregated um, the whole city of Chicago was very segregated, and, and there were serious racial hostilities there into the 1960s. Um, Martin Luther King attempted to bring the civil rights movement north to Chicago and, and had a very hard time um, a advocating for fair housing and, and to, to get rid of segregation, um, and, and the city did not, did not receive him warmly. Um, but on that note, Liza, I wanted to turn to uh, August 1966, what this uh, would have been uh, when Michelle Obama was just a couple years old. But the housing march in Chicago, led by Dr. Martin Luther King, um, again, two years after Michelle Obama was born. This is Dr. King in Chicago. In Chicago, on the day that we marched through that narrow street, and we marched by four or five thousand people that day, but they were in trees. Dr. Martin Luther King in Chicago. This was the Chicago that Michelle LaVon Robinson grew up in, Liza Mundy. That's exactly right. She would have been two years old in 1966. And what is, what is so interesting about her life is that she has traveled through these, these post-civil rights landscapes. And when she was um, when she was a very young girl, in sometime in the late 60s, her family was able to move into a neighborhood that formerly had been available only to white people. And, and you know, before that, it was so important. African-American children were taught which neighborhoods were hospitable and safe to them and which were unsafe. And this previously would have been a neighborhood that probably would have been unsafe. Um, her family was able to move into this neighborhood. And, and one of her first experiences as a girl would have been witnessing white flight as, as African-American families moved up socioeconomically, were able to get out of the um, neighborhoods that they had been pretty much compelled to live in for decades. And, and, and she, as a child, would have witnessed, um, you know, would have witnessed the white neighbors moving away. And in, a, in the period of about 10 years, this very nice neighborhood in Southside Chicago went from being all white to being all black. And socioeconomically, where did it stand, the south side of Chicago, where Michelle grew up? 
The South Side is, you know, it's it's varied socioeconomically. Um, this neighborhood, South Shore, I think would be described as middle class. It has some working class parts, uh, but Jesse Jackson Sr. also lives in South Shore in a very nice part of of that area. And and Michelle, when she was in high school, was very close friends with his daughter, Santita. Um, so the interesting thing about South Side is, you know, it did suffer segregation and oppression, but it also produced artists. It produced Richard Wright. It produced any number of jazz artists and blues artists, and also, you know, developed its own political base. Uh, so, so you know, and powerful local politicians. Uh, and so, growing up in that area, she was able to, to meet and become friends with people who would be allies for her husband later on. We're talking to Liza Monday, the bi biographer of Michelle Obama. Her book is called Michelle. We'll be back with her in a minute.